Hi, uh, everyone. Welcome to the DTC and JCSDA joint seminar. Uh, my name is Sarah Lu, and I'm the research scientist from SUNY Albany and also with Joint Center for Certified Data Simulation. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Shi Wei Wei. Shi Wei is a PhD candidate from SUNY Albany. He received his bachelor degree and master degree from National Central University at Taiwan. And Shi Wei joined the PhD program at SUNY Albany in 2017 and my research group. Uh, his presentation hosted by, jointly by DTC and JCSDA. Uh, long story short, I applied for DTC visit the program for Shi Wei to visit Boulder. And the visit is actually to work with GSL and DTC scientists on Aerosol DA. But the visit was delayed first by the long process to get NOAA account and then later on by federal shutdown. And then eventually it's actually complicated by my relocation to border in summer 2019. So I'm very, very grateful for the DTC director have been very, very flexible to accommodate the change in his status from a short-term visit to an extended state. And she right now is a visiting student hosted by Joint Center for Certified Data Simulation. So I really also thanks my boss, the GC State Director for his support. So uh, she was told is told aerosol aware data simulation system, the response to CRT and simulation and GSI analysis to the presence of aerosol. I should wait, floor is yours. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Shi Wei. So today I was going to share my research work, which is about the, the aerosol aware data simulation system and focus on the how the CRT and simulation and the GSI analysis to respond with, with, with the uh, presence of aerosols. So before I, before I start it, um, I would like to thank the DEC and Joint Center uh, for hosting my visit and thanks the uh, collaborating uh, scientists from, uh, from DDC, Guo Qin and Min, and from Joint Center, Ben, Chen, and Patrick provide their uh, grateful input and the great uh, input and the comments to my study. And also appreciate uh, directors uh, Luisa and uh, uh, for facilitating my facilitating my visit, also all, all the administrative uh, help from Kate. And in this presentation, I was uh, part of the result. I collaborated with NOAA scientists from ENC and NSD. They provide me uh, a lot of information and uh, the guidance to to their work. And uh, lastly, I also I would like to thank my uh, Sony Open colleague. Dustin and my committee member, including my advisor, Sarah, Ryan, Living, Living, and Function. Both of them provide very useful and uh, helpful input and comments to my research work. Especially, I would like to thank Sarah, uh, connect a lot of uh, many uh, experts in this field and uh, also um, have uh, this part opportuni opportunity for me to share my research. So hope you you enjoy it. Let's get started. So today I will, uh, the talk will be, have three major sections. The first one will be the background information. And then I will cover the ongoing research work about the aerosol aware de estimation. And then the next one is the, uh, about my next step of research and the conclusion. So, excuse me. Um, what are aerosols? Uh, typically, aerosols are a small uh, suspended uh, particles in the in the atmosphere, and the size size normally is around 0.1 micrometer to 10 micrometer. And as the, this figure shows, you can see this one. This figure is come from IPCC AR phase, and it shows the the forcing and the feedback pathway of the aerosols, greenhouse gases, and the clouds in the Earth system. So <coughs> we've just focused on the aerosols and the green arrows. You can see that aerosols would 
uh, affect the directly interact with the radiations, which is uh, which will uh, adjust the radiation budget in the Earth system, and also it can be treated as uh, the cloud nuclear <coughs> cloud nuclear for the to affect to impact the cloud formation and the precipitation rate, and further also adjust the radiations budget. So you will also have it. You will also, and that's you will affect the atmospheric environment. So as you can see here, it's very complex. So basically, um, <clears throat> in less couple of decades, uh, we most of our effort focus on the try to describe the better describe those physical representation of the, the aerosol processes in the forecast model. So many study already point out uh, when we consider better consider the air, aerosol uh, interaction with radiation and the micro and the cloud, which is in the cloud uh, microphysical skin, you will have we will get a better forecast scales. And the, most of uh, our modern uh, energy system, we also initialize our. <coughs> Our focus model by the DA system. In the DA system, we will ingest the observations from different sources. So, um, the first uh, first type of uh, measurement is for, come from in situ measurement. So, for in, in situ measurement, we actually the aerosol information is already in, embedded inside the measurement. So, when we assimilate those in situ measurement, we actually the uh, those aerosol information like a uh, aerosol information will be automatically uh, propagated into the DA analysis. And then another, ma another major source for the assimilated data set is the retrieval data. So um, some kind of uh, atmospheric correction can be, will be uh, is applied to uh, into the retrieval method and uh, you can somehow constrain the aerosol impacts on the retrieval quality. But, but for the, another big portion of the observation, the radiance observation, like a infrared, uh, the radiance observation from infrared sensor and the microwave sensors. Currently, uh, most DA system would directly assimilate those radiance data, which is in the form of the brand's temperature. We use, we, uh, we actually assimilate when we assimilate those radiance data. We need a, a radiance observation operator like a CRTM. It's a radiative transfer model to simulate those brightness temperature. However, most of current data simulation system we don't consider errors, <coughs> errors inside inside the simulations. But many studies already uh, reported uh, that. Consider dust aerosols can reduce the branch temperature simulation or the branch temperature measurement. Uh, like a Sokolik 2002, uh, <coughs> she, uh, she consider uh, she use artificially uh, provide an aerosol, uh, aerosol profile with different loading and uh, different mixtures, which is a different kind of partition for the simulation, radiance simulation of, of IR window channel from different kind, different sensors, like a Hertz, AVHR, MODIS. So <clears throat> as this figure shows, you can see, we can see that uh, after we consider aerosols inside the radiance simulation, the branch temperature can be reduced uh, about six degree in the window channel. And also in the field campaign, um, the cooling effect or our, the cooling effect is also be is also observed uh, during the shade uh, fuel campaign. You can see in the in the window channel uh, the in high weight or they report about two to four degree cooling over the window channel. So given this kind of cooling effects on um, radiance observations, we can actually when we uh, deal with this issue, uh, this deal with this aerosol affected data. We can 
we can reject those errors of weighted data observations like current ECNWF approach. Um, they uh, implement the uh, errors of detection method to identify and reject those errors of affected data for high spectral IR sensors. So a uh, still at all 2019 shows uh, there are uh, about 60% LC observation there are rejected during, uh, are rejected over those areas of latent regions. But we actually also have another kind of options, to, another option to, to, uh, to deal with the areas of faded data. Like uh, we can certainly assimilate it if we can provide somehow some kind of aerosol information during the uh, uh, radiance simulation. So like Weaver et al. in the 2003 and uh, King et al. 2018, both of the study try to consider those aerosol effects on the satellite radiance observations. So in Weaver et al. actually, they, they, uh, that's, they actually assimilate those uh, retrieval data when, we con when they consider the aerosol effect in the retrieval uh, method. And the king at all directly consider the aerosol information in the radiant simulation. And both of them got a similar uh, response on the analysis. So both of them see the <coughs> a warmer analysis surface temperature, like here it shows the sea surface temperature is, is become warmer than the uh, original analysis. And also the lower level uh, atmospheric temperature will be also become warmer. So based on the, those, uh, those understanding from uh, previous studies, uh, I just wondering if we can, uh, if we can consi consider, the, uh, if we consider those areas of information in the radiance simulations, just like King had all did before, can we really uh, improve loss and improve the analysis and the forecast? So, so during lab, uh, during this uh, hypothesis, we actually the first important thing is how the radiance simulation will respond to the will respond to the presence of aerosol. So, in my in my study, I basically use in the use the GSI-CRT systems. So. The, so my first first part of work w w uh, is based on the CRT and sensitivity. So in the CRT and sensitivity experiments, I actually uh, uh, per, uh, generate uh, several a series of dust profiles with uh, different aerosol dust aerosol loading and uh, different uh, and uh, when we uh, and uh, fix the uh, aerosol loading and perturb the deep, perturb the profile with the different peak levels and the thickness and the, the, the thin partition of the dust aerosol. And for like a, like a figure shows here, uh, you can see uh, I, I perturb the, the aerosol loading from the, from the LD uh, 0.45 to LD, uh, LD 550 at two, of two, 0.45 to the point uh, around three. And then also I perturb the, the peak levels, which is varies from the uh, around 500 millibar to, to 850 millibar under the same aerosol loading, but a different peak level. And in this, in this sensitivity test, I actually will uh, assess the brain's temperature simulation and the, the Jacobians derived from CRTM and uh, and uh, examining them against the, the clear sky simulation. So here is the the result about the sensitivity of brightness temperature to the column mass density change. So as you can see, I plot the brightness temperature difference between the consider, considering aerosols and the clear sky as a function of the wave number and. When, as you can see, when we have a much more loading, uh, more loading of air dust aerosols in the column, you can see the cooling effect can 
will become stronger. And then the, the, you could reach above uh, negative uh, 20 degree cooling over the window channel region. And then here, I put, here is the plot for the uh, brain's temperature to sensitivity to the, the peak level. Since I will use the same loading of the dust profile and I just perturb the peak level. So as the figure shows here, the, when we have a uh, high, higher, uh, when the aerosol layer peaks at a higher level, then the cooling effect will become stronger in the window channel. Also um, for the uh, temperature Jacobian, which is normally will be used inside the uh, uh, variation of data simulation system to, to weighted the background error and the observation error to mapping the, the, the information between the observation space and the, the model space. So, so I also try to see the response of the Jacobian, the derivation of Jacobian in the CRTM. So as I show here is the temperature Jacobian change rate, which is, uh, which is calculated through the through the uh, goodness of fit measure in used inside Garand or 2001, which is uh, uh, commonly used in to uh, validate the Jacobian performance. So basically you can consider that this, qu this quantity is a, is a current integral change rate of the, Jacob of the temperature Jacobian. So as I show here, when when I when there is more dust aerosol inside the column, we can see the uh, the which is a green line. Uh, that is uh, LD five hundred fifty or of the two point seven. It will generate more changes on the uh, temperature Jacobian. And uh, for another sensitivity to uh, to the uh, aerosol peaks level. You can see not like the brain's temperature simulation, you actually allowed the, when the aerosol peaks at a higher level, we will have a stronger brain's temperature cooling inside the, uh, in, in the window channel, but not like the brain's temperature simulation. When we, when, when the aerosol layer peaks at a lower, lower level, it actually shows a larger, larger uh, change rate there. Uh, of the temperature Jacobian. So it, it might be also indicate that the temperature, the temperature Jacobian is actually more sensitive to the, the concentration inside the one single layer instead of rather than the, the whole total current uh, uh, loading. And so actually the CRTM also provide another Jacobian for water vapor, it also it should be also used in to used inside the GSI to to generate to map in the water vapor from model state and the, the brain temperature space. So uh, here I provide a, a single channel for the, to demonstrate the relationships between the water water vapor Jacobian and the temperature Jacobian, which is a single. This channel is a window uh, thermal infrared window channel. And uh, so here I only plot the three kinds of uh, condition, which is the clear sky and the LD with the, with the, the that's the aerosol with the LD of uh, 0.9. Here is the triangle dot over here. And then the LD of uh, 2.7 is the square dot over, over here. So as you can see, I plot the water vapor Jacobian in Y axis and the temperature Jacobian X axis. So as you can see here, when we consider the more aerosols inside the CRTN simulation, you can see the Jacobian for temperature will become more positive. And then the water vapor Jacobian it actually uh, become less, becomes less negative. So based on what I found, Inside the CRT and sensitivity test, we can see the uh, there is a sub, uh, substantial cooling effects on brain's temperature simulation in the IR window, and also the Jacobians for temperature and the water vapor also be changed. 
So based on the variational uh, data simulations uh, method, uh, this this equation is often uh, commonly used to to, to uh, for the for the variation of method. So basically, when we change when we change the the furnace temperature simulation, the delta y will be be changed. So even we only change the delta y, then the analysis increment will be changed. But we also see that the Jacobians for from CRTN will will become become different. So so you can see that the background error turn inside the the weighting of the background error turn inside the the total weighting is also be adjusted. So basically, we can expect the analysis can, will be changed inside the, the analysis system. So next next section section I will I will demonstrate present the results from the unsafe GDS uh, experiments. So in this section, I actually I conduct uh, we conducted two uh, experiments. Uh, to demonstrate the errors are impaired on the analysis. So the first experiment is the control run, which is the operational like uh, configuration. It's a cycling debt, cycling uh, system and, uh, and we don't put any errors of information inside. So which is uh, errors of blind uh, uh, cycling experiment. And a loss of analysis are conducted for the August 20, uh, 2017 and uh, generated uh, by the 40 year environment method with 80 members based on uh, GSI. And then the CRT in during the process each during the process in each analysis cycle, you can uh, the first case uh, from the global forecast system will be propagated into the CRT and CRTN will provide the, the brain temperature simulations and then you will come out uh, first case departure, which is the observation, the all minus F, which is the observation minus first first case. And based on the based on those information, the bias correction and the quality control will determine which observations will be used inside the minimization process. So then you will come out the analysis from GSI and then provide us a initial condition for next cycle. And uh, the second experiment is the aerosol run, which is the major difference between the control run. The difference uh, to the control run is uh, we uh, we provide the uh, NGAC aerosols into the CRTN simulation. So, which means the the simulation of the the brain temperature simulation will become aerosol affected, and then also uh, we just try to. Uh, Clearly demonstrate that errors are in place. So we use the same identical, the identical first case from CR control run. So in this case, the, our first case in the errors of run is is a totally same as the control run. Then the all and the, and then in the errors of run, we don't uh, perform the we don't uh, feedback the analysis back to, to for the next cycle. So which means the each analysis cycle in errors along is, is independent. So the errors of impact can be uh, clearly demonstrated. So in, in, the, in, the, in the GDS experiment, I, I started with the, the simulation of the balance temperature, which is the first order thing inside the system. So here I provide the uh, Brandis temperature difference between AER run and the control run uh, with the different uh, aerosols dominated by different aerosol species, which is dust, sea salt, carbonaceous, and sulfate as a function of the, the wave number. And here I only plot the, the four uh, high, sp high spatial uh, IR sensors ingested in the G days. So, so as we can see here in during the window in the window channel region, we can see that does provide the strongest cooling effect up to about four degrees. Com 
and then CISO is the second second strong uh, species in the South and carbonaceous data uh, carbonaceous aerosol uh, only have a mi uh, minor uh, impact on the branch temperature simulation. And then following the different the cooling effects in the branch temperature simulation, our first case departure, which is the O minus F, will be adjusted as well. Here I provide the statistics for all the all ingested uh, observations for Yasi uh, meta bay, um, on board meta bay. So the as a function of the wave number. And the upper panel is for uh, mean uh, mean value of the first case departures and the bottom panel is for the lumen square uh, first case departures. So blue line is for the errors of one control line is a red line. In, during, in, in a thermal infrared window channel, you can see that uh, errors of one does have the, does have the uh, more positive first case departure, mean first case departures. So which mean, which is the, uh, the which is reflect the uh, simulated uh, cool, cooler simulation of the balance temperature, and also with this kind of uh, the cooling effect on the balance temperature, we also can can see that errors of wrong has a smaller lumen square error, lumen square first case departure in in a window channel, just very slight improvement. And then after we got the first gate departures in the GSI EA tray uh, using a variation of the bias correction scheme to estimate the, the biases inside the first gate departures. So uh, here is the, the estimate of the biases from the control run and the errors around and the layer differences. So as you can see here, the, the errors around this have a smaller, uh, Bias estimates from the, the B, uh, BC always and, and then also another uh, uh, feature is you, you can see that has a smaller, less lengthy differences in after we consider errors of inside CRTM. So basically, the the changes of the bias estimates from from the variation of BC method is uh, contributed to for, by the lapse rate trend and the surface emissivity sensitivity trend. So basically for the lapse rate trend is uh, plot shows us uh, in the upper panel, you can see it's very uh, collocated with areas of latent region like Sahara Desert and the uh, middle, middle West, Middle East region. So because the uh, lapse rate trend is basically uh, pre predicted uh, by the uh, by the summation of the temperature gradient and the transmittance gradient. Since we don't, we have the same first cases in the errors of run and the control run. So the temperature gradient is actually the same. So which means that the, the left return is uh, totally, the difference in this term is majorly uh, come from the, majorly come from the, the CRTM provided uh, transmittance profile. So when we consider aerosols, the transmittance becomes smaller than it, then it uh, generates smaller, uh, smaller uh, biases uh, at this turn. And another turn for the surface emissivity sensitivity actually uh, also using the, we also use the, the, branch, the, the information from CRTM, which is the branch temperature Jacobian for surface emissivity from CRTM. As I show here, you can see since this term is only applied on the non-water surface, so you can see uh, um, you have a strong uh, change over the, the land region, land land surface. So, which means that if we consider aerosols in the CRTN simulation, you will adjust the, the basic estimate uh, in the GSI and. After we got the best corrected first case departure, the GSI will paste those uh, information into the QC procedures. And then, so here I start to uh, 
check the what kind of a change of the QC results will be inside the uh, errors are wrong. So here is a table uh, show the, the changes of QC results in AER wrong with respect to control wrong. So the base is the uh, control wrong QC result. So I compare the errors or wrong QC result with the control wrong, and there are for the uh, for the QC paste uh, error uh, observations. Uh, they are around sixty percent. It didn't. It didn't change, but around forty percent observations originally assimilated inside the six control run are rejected in the errors run, and then also in the total amount uh, for all the observations, you can see about twenty percent observations QZ results are changed, which means that QZ results become different at this window channel. And for our infrared sensors, uh, we also, uh, well, here is the data, data usage change in the, for our uh, infrared sensors. So it, here I provide the monthly average uh, with it. So also the uh, average over the, the estimated channels for the uh, infrared sensors. As you can see in the uh, red box here, after we consider aerosol, uh, AR run, they have the more, they assimilate more observations for most of the uh, uh, infrared sensors, only except the AVHR sensor, AVHR and the survey sensor. And then after the QC and the bias correction, then our uh, assimilated uh, data sets become be determined. So normally we can use the PDF form, PDF uh, the distribution of probability distribution to uh, to to quantify if the uh, to test to assess the if the price correlation work properly or not. So here I provide the, the result from the air uh, sensor at a single uh, at a uh, Window channel. So the histograms are the result before QC, before BC, uh, before the before bias correction, and then dash line is the the result, uh, the distribution after bias correction. So as you can see here, the the in control run, the bias correction do work properly since the peak, uh, the control run, the peak. Uh, highest uh, probability is over the, the being around the zero degree. But the like aerosol run, we do have more screwness, which means uh, in aerosol run, the, the assimilated data set is not really unbiased. So, which means our analysis may be also affected, which is maybe a biased uh, analysis. And the other high spatial IR sensors also have similar responses. So the last part is about the so after we got the assimilated uh, first case departure, we can the analysis can be can be min, uh, can be generated. So here I provide the uh, monthly mean differences of the temperature uh, at a at the surface and the eight hundred fifty mean bar, and also I plot the temperatures uh, cross section uh, over the transatlantic region. So as you can see here, we got a very similar uh, response as the uh, river and oil and key and also result. We got a warmer sea surface temperature over the, the transatlantic region and also have a warmer uh, low level uh, atmospheric temperatures over the, the, this region. Also you can see from the cross section we can we will have a warmer lower lower level and a cooler uh, mean level. In this case, which may also affect the uh, activity over the this uh, the African history with activity over this region. And then I also uh, 
I also evaluate the sea surface temperature analysis with, against the, the buoy and the shift measurement, which is also come from the ingest data set. I use the linear regression uh, to test, uh, to assess the, the, to generate the statistic of the uh, uh, OMSA, which is the observation minus analysis. And so, so the positive value in the mean this current means that the uh, analysis has a core biases compared to the SST measurement. So basically through that statistics, we actually don't have a, it's actually the neutral impacts, but we do reduce the core biases over these four regions, which is have a stronger, stronger temperature differences uh, when we, uh, in the analysis. So, Basically, we can see that we do have a smaller core biases and then the lumen square uh, analysis departure also becomes smaller. So based on the sensitivity test, uh, based on the GDS experiment, we can see that dust errors also provide a stronger, uh, also have a strongest uh, cooling phase. And uh, the gloss cooling phase on the Brand's temperature simulation will result a warmer analysis temperature in surface and the lower level. And also we do see a considerable change in the bias corrections and the, the, the quality control in, in thermal infrared window channel. So for the next, next step in my research, I, uh, to actually to explore those areas of affected IR sense observations in DSS and we must have the uh, radiation operator have the aerosol scattering uh, uh, co-creation in uh, when it solving the radiative transfer equation. So fortunately, XRDN already have this capability. And then, <clears throat> and then in next step, I, I would like to apply the, some, some kind of aerosol detection method to identify those aerosol affected data in the system, then with this capability, I can also have better uh, statistics uh, selections for the data. And also, uh, as I showed, the quality control and the bias correlation in GSI have been affected considerably. So when we uh, assimilate those kind of aerosol affected data, we should revisit those the QC procedures and the bias corrections. So here's my conclusion. The, basically the CRK and sensitivity test and the one month uh, GDS experience have been conducted and uh, we do see some sensitivity in the GDS analysis. And uh, the brain temperature and Jacobian actually are more sensitive to the aerosol loading and the, the layer, uh, peak layer the peaks the altitude of aerosol layer. And then the, and the dust aerosol have a stronger cooling phase and we will have a warmer analysis temperature. So also the bias correction and the quality control should be revisited in the future, uh, near future study. So thanks everyone. Uh, thanks you for your attention and uh, I, will, I will happy to take any questions and comments. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. So let's go through the question. Um, all right, the first one is from Reggie. She said, have you looked at the sensitivity Jacobian to single scattering albedo as well as only to ALD? Not yet, I, I only, Oh, currently I only change the aerosol loading, so you will, so you will change the, let me see, sensitivity of the Jacobian. No, I, I, I haven't seen that, yeah. So only, only focus on the aerosol loading and the, the, the thickness of the, just the, some geomet uh, geometric difference perturbation on the aerosol profile. Uh, 
And the next question is uh, from Brad. How does a model AOD compare to observation? Could some of the bias in the AI experiment be due to underestimating AOD? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't really t uh, check the, how, the differences between the, the NGAGB aerosols and the, the, the observations, but I, I do agree that uh, biases inside inside the model uh, forecast aerosol model will be will affect our results actually. So that's that's also the reason I I would like to uh, at least somehow estimate the biases due to the uncertainty on the the aerosol forecast in in the bias correction. So some right just considering to add one kind of uh, predictor inside the variation of bias correction to, to somehow reduce the uh, impact, to constrain the impact on the, from the uncertainties from aerosol model. We have minor tweaks that well, could be overestimate. So, but I guess it's the same answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And next question will be, uh, okay. And next question from Ben. Oh, Ben responds to Regis. Oh. So is Jacobian only sensitive to model state variable, although one could examine a relationship between radiance and concentration, Jacobian and SSA? Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> and next question from Roger. Any plan to use visible NIR channel radiance simulation for aerosol? Uh, this, this actually, because uh, in, my, in my study, I actually focus on the aerosol impact on radiance data simulation, not for the aerosol data simulation. So it's kind of a little bit different aspect, I think, yeah. All right, I guess my, my understanding, the CRT and invisible, I think still work in progress, or maybe other can correct, yeah. I do, I do see there is one question from, or comment from Ben Rustin, but but we somehow we probably just skip it. Yeah. Are we able to, are we able to, to. Slide on? Yeah, to, to get a. Jennifer, can you check the slide? Look at this one question from Ben Rustin. It doesn't look like there's any question from him. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, so, so I guess uh, all the questions submit to slide or being addressed, right? Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for for you know, join the seminar, the DTC and JCSD joint seminar presented by Shi Wei. And then I guess the last slide in Shi Wei's talk have his email. So if anything you want to follow up, you know, feel free to drop an email. But thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. So I guess uh, the seminar section is end. Thanks everyone coming.